Hello out there everybody, Manny here at Area 503, and I hope you all have been well since our last video. I was speaking the other day with an individual about aliens and UFOs. This person asked me, Well, do you believe in aliens? To which I answered, yes. <laughs> You're crazy. Why am I telling you this? Because I do believe that alien life exists. An alien race will. Be totally alien. Aliens. Huh? Aliens. Aliens. Alien. Aliens? Alien life force. Aliens? Goddamn aliens! Tell her, Brian. He's an alien. What? Aliens? And I believe that alien disclosure has already occurred and is ongoing. So I would like to lay out my case for alien disclosure. In my opinion, disclosure truly began the day after Roswell when the media reported the following. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Well, there you have it, folks. July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces announced a crash disc was recovered outside of Roswell, New Mexico. The government then quickly changed its story and said that it was a weather balloon, not a UFO, that was recovered. They even went so far as to put on an amazing dog and pony show, complete with bewildered officers holding up wreckage that was allegedly brought in on trucks. Aliens and UFOs do not exist. And so the lie that would span four generations was told, and the conspiracy to cover up the truth began. Now I could talk for days about Roswell, New Mexico, but instead I'm just going to play this short clip by the late Stan Friedman, who spent his life researching the subject, amongst other subjects. Well, there's no question that the real truth is that the United States Army Air Force recovered a crash flying saucer, it recovered alien bodies, and it's covered them up very successfully. Stan recently passed away and will be missed, but he was convinced that the U.S. government recovered a crash ship from Roswell, New Mexico, and kept it from the world. Just two weeks after Roswell, President Truman signed into law the National Security Act of 1947, which restructured the military and created the National Security Council, as well as the CIA. And it gave the government more powers to restrict subjects and make them top secret. Now, I personally don't think that Roswell was the first visitor that we've had. I think that we've been being visited for a very, very long time. In fact, earlier that year, UFOs were spotted in other parts of the United States, like this one over Twin Falls, Idaho. And in fact, going back to 1942, UFO sightings had increased around the world. In 1942, there was a famous incident over Los Angeles where U.S. anti-aircraft engaged something. However, no wreckage was found and the military issued a full denial of the battle over L.A. What made the incident at Roswell different from all of these other events is that for whatever reason, the UFO came down and was recovered. The government originally acknowledged this fact, but changed its story, forever burying the truth under the guise of national security. I think I'm going to start calling this conspiracy the Great Lie, because it is one of the most detrimental lies ever told and its repercussions would ultimately end up affecting the lives of billions of human beings, as I will later illustrate. The Great Lie 
was told in 1947, and it should come as no surprise that shortly afterwards, the U.S. military began to embark on a series of clandestine missions, such as Operation Paperclip, which was a secret mission to capture Nazi scientists and bring them to work in the United States in the aerospace, rocketry, and pharmaceutical and chemical design industries. And then there was Operation High Jump, which was a massive expedition to the South Pole, hidden under the disguise of an Arctic training mission. As Secretary of the Navy, James V. Forrestal explains the reasons for the enterprise. There is only one untouched reservoir of raw materials left in the world, and that's in the region known as Antarctica. An area larger than the combined area of the United States and Europe. The American government is sending a naval expedition to that region. The purpose is to train our Navy in polar operations so that it may better perform its function of preserving the peace upon the seven seas of the world. I've done a ton of research on Operation High Jump and I still don't know what it was all about. But I don't think that you're going to take 5,000 men and 13 ships including an aircraft carrier to Antarctica just for a training exercise. Add to this the fact that the mission's inventory included heavy equipment to build runways and other permanent structures, and I have a far easier time believing that High Jump was down at the South Pole for some other reason. The Great, the Great Lie. Lie. But Manny, what does all of this have to do with aliens and UFOs? That's a good question and I think I have an answer to it. It has long been speculated by many that the pre-World War II sudden buildup of German weaponry and technology can be attributed to the German possession of some advanced technology, either given willfully through barter or exchange, or found through recovery of a crash site or a military engagement site. This theory is further supported by a letter written on August 2nd, 1939 by Albert Einstein addressed to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In the letter, Albert Einstein informs the President of the creation of uranium and its devastating potential as a weapon. He also warns the President that the Germans are in development of an atomic weapon and he urges the president to start an atomic weapons program of our own, leading to the creation of the Manhattan Project. It should be noted that this was almost one month before Germany would invade Poland, officially declaring World War II. It's almost as if Einstein knew something was coming. But if the Germans really did have advanced technology, it would really explain why the United States had such a do-or-die attitude while entering World War II. Let's jump ahead a little bit to the 1960s. Several former Air Force officials are taking the cloak off reported UFO sightings on U.S. military bases. They were seeing strange lights in the sky. Robert Salas worries aliens have their eyes on our nuclear weapons. The former Air Force Minuteman launch officer remembers one morning in early in March of 1967. While on duty, several in the military witnessed unexplained red lights in the skies over Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana. A uh, very um, frightened guard called me and said they were looking at a a glowing red object pulsating about 30 feet in diameter, uh, hovering right above the front gate. Moments later, the alarms on 10 nuclear missiles sounded, and then they were mysteriously shut down. Here is an intercontinental ballistic missile operator claiming that UFOs disabled his weapons. He isn't the only military member to talk about UFOs. In fact, just recently, the New York Times ran an article quoting a Navy pilot who saw UFOs daily. Some people who think disclosure hasn't happened already often ask me, If aliens and UFOs exist, wouldn't our astronauts have seen them? That is a totally legitimate question, and 
During my research, I've actually found a few websites that address that issue and have some links to some articles where astronauts have seen some UFOs and strange things in space. The thing that you have to realize about NASA is that they are actually a military organization being a branch of the Air Force, and so you can't expect them to have full disclosure. I found a recent news article where an astronaut claimed to have seen an organic UFO outside the space shuttle. However, NASA quickly denied it, stating it was ice crystals. Another prime example is the Apollo 11 mission. During the live feed, transmission was cut for approximately two minutes, supposedly due to an overheated camera. However, back on Earth, amateur ham radio operators claim to have caught an exchange between NASA and the astronauts. It is alleged that Neil Armstrong saw some sort of spaceship on the rim of the crater while landing, and he said the following, quote, These babies are huge, sir. Enormous. Oh God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there, lined up on the far side of the crater edge. They're on the moon, watching us. If that exchange actually happened, it would be clear-cut proof that alien life exists. And what about Edgar Mitchell, a former astronaut from Roswell, New Mexico, who was outspoken from the early 90s about alien disclosure? Dr. Mitchell gave numerous interviews and talks about aliens and UFOs over the years. He's just another example about how disclosure has already come, you just have to listen. Let's talk about politicians and disclosure. It stands to reason that if a government or governments is behind the great lie, that you wouldn't expect politicians to talk about UFOs and aliens, but it seems likely that the architects of this conspiracy are likely part of a top secret subgroup within the government, so it's quite likely that a lot of these politicians are not even a part of it, at least not knowingly. So you will occasionally hear politicians talk about UFOs and alien life. Former President Jimmy Carter is a very famous example. He claimed to have seen a UFO in 1969 at a dinner engagement with several of his friends. The Great Lie And through the mid-80s, President Reagan had quite the alien obsession. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. There was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet. What if all of us in the world discovered that we were threatened by an outer a power from outer space, from another planet. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war? Barack Obama went on Jimmy Kimmel and spoke about Area 51 and UFOs. The moment I was inaugurated, my hand would, would just, it'd still be hot from touching the Bible, and I would <laughs> immediately race to uh, wherever they hold, have the files uh, about Area 51 and the UFOs, <laughs> yeah. and I'd go through everything to find out what happened. Right. Did you do that? <laughs> That's why you will not be president. <laughs> Because uh, that's, that's, that's the first thing that you would do. 
Um, <laughs> the the aliens won't let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you reveal all their secrets. <laughs> they, you look, they, they exercise strict control over us. Now, you know, there are a lot of people that are going to examine your, your facial expressions here, um, every, every twitch, everything, oh, no. and say, and of course, so did you look? Did you see? Did you explore? I, I, I can't reveal anything. Oh, really? He had a very tongue-in-cheek interview, of course, and he says that there are no secret UFO or alien files. But then again, I think that's what they're told to say. Because President Clinton said he did go right in and he did check and there was nothing. Well, you know, that's, that's what we're instructed to say. <laughs> yep. Former President Clinton also went on Jimmy Kimmel and was interviewed about UFOs and alien life. He had tried while in office to review the Great Lie. But he was met with opposition from within the government. If you get a chance to watch the film Unacknowledged, check it out. It features Dr. Stephen Greer and it talks all about his interactions with President Clinton. I'll talk more about Dr. Greer later. So it makes it increasingly less likely that we're alone. Oh, you're trying to give me a hint that there are aliens. <laughs> no, I'm trying to tell you I don't know. Oh, you're trying to give me a hint that there are aliens. <laughs> no, I'm trying to tell you I don't know. Oh. But if we were visited someday, I wouldn't be surprised. When President Clinton's wife, Hillary, ran for the presidency, she promised to revisit the issue of alien life and UFOs if she was elected. Because if I was president, that's the first thing I do. I go right into those files and right. see what was going on. Right. And he said that he did do that. Yes. And that he didn't find anything. Well, I'm oh. gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. Uh, yeah, why not? Right? And, and you know, there's a new name. It's unexplained aerial phenomenon. Unexplained aerial phenomena, yep, really? Yep, UAP. That's the latest nomenclature. I so, like the old one. I like UFO. I don't know why. Well, it, I think we can use them interchangeably, but I would like us to go into those files and hopefully make as much of that public as possible. If there's nothing there, let's tell people there's nothing there. What if, if there something. is something there? Well, if there is something there, unless it's a you know, threat to national security, I think we ought to uh, share it with the public. Some people believe that this won her the disfavor of the architects of the Great Lie, who used their resources to help her lose the election. Check out this clip from 2016, where the European Union Commissioner claims to have spoken to leaders from other planets. Il faut savoir que ceux qui nous observent de loin sont inquiets. J'ai vu euh, et entendu et écouté plusieurs des dirigeants euh, d'autres planètes. Ils sont très inquiets parce qu'ils s'interrogent sur la voie que l'Union européenne va euh, euh, poursuivre. Et donc, il faut rassurer et les Européens et ceux qui nous observent de euh, plus euh, loin. The former Russian president Dmitry Medvedev had this to say on the subject. Более подробную информацию на эту тему вы можете получить, посмотрев известный хроникально-документальный фильм «Люди в черном». Вышло несколько версий. Сколько их среди нас? Сколько их среди нас, рассказывать не буду, потому что это может вызвать панику. 
Ha ha ha. Good one. The documentary film Men in Black. But that brings up a good point. Using fiction to hide the truth. Oh, so. I mean, if you were hiding the truth, releasing it as a fictional story would be a great way to deflect if the topic arises. It allows you to do precisely what the former Russian president just did. You reference a movie like Men in Black or Stargate or Independence Day. And then you chuckle and laugh and move on. Now, I personally feel that shows and movies such as these have been used for a long time to slowly acclimate the masses to the idea of extraterrestrial life. Did you hear that? This is madness. But hey, these are some of my favorite titles, and they are very entertaining, so I can't complain too much. We are the Borg. Resistance is futile. But if you're still not convinced that disclosure has occurred, let's take a look at some recent cases. In 2017, Luis Elizondo released three videos from the Pentagon that showed unidentified flying objects recorded by the U.S. military. Elizondo is the former official in charge of ATIP, or the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which was a secret Pentagon program to investigate aerospace threats, not UFOs, allegedly. Oh my gosh, dude. Elizondo left the program because he felt like the UFO phenomenon was not being given proper attention by the leadership in the military. After he left, he secured the release of these three videos that allegedly show UFOs. Check out this piece by George Knapp in Las Vegas. Remember George's name. I'll be talking about him later. Until he stepped out on stage last now, October alongside rock star Tom DeLonge and other former government insiders, most of the world had never heard of Luis Elizondo, which is how he liked it. Elizondo's government career was spent in the shadows, mostly as a Pentagon intelligence officer. I was at the top of my game in my career field, and I left it all to have this conversation with the American public. There the conversation is about UFOs. For almost 10 years, Again, Elizondo was a central figure in a secret Pentagon program to study unknown aerial threats. These days, he's preparing to relocate to the sleepy beach town of Encinitas, which is where Tom DeLonge's To The Stars Academy is based. That organization made public a pair of UFO videos which Elizondo helped to declassify before he left Washington. The videos were recorded by military pilots during encounters with far superior technology. In December, the New York Times reported on Elizondo and the videos, which set off a flurry of mainstream news coverage. Critics questioned whether Elizondo had released the videos on his own, as if he hid them in his lunch pail. The Department of Defense made the decision to release them through the Department of Defense adopts or process, approved the release for exactly the reason why the request was made. So it was completely on the up and up. One video recorded off San Diego in 2004 capped off a week of encounters between UFOs and the USS Nimitz battle group. Navy pilots got up close and personal with an object they described as a large tic-tac, but which was capable of seemingly impossible movements and acceleration. Critics have come up with many theories about why the video and the chief witness are not legitimate. And yet when he tells you he's seen something, go from a near hover or something that is over the water going at 450 knots and all of a sudden takes off over the horizon in two seconds. You better believe what he's telling you he's, he's seen. And by the way, that's backed up by three other individuals that were also on that same flight in, in two aircraft. And then later by the radar operators and then later by two more F-18s afterwards. It frustrates me because people say, well, that's just IR glare. That's IR fuzz. You know, <laughs> that's an atmospheric condition. A bug on the windshield. Right. I said, look, atmospheric conditions, you cannot lock a radar onto. So I'm sorry. 
It's not atmospheric. An initial cursory report about the Tic Tac encounter was tossed in a drawer at the Pentagon, but the case was revived after Nevada Senator Harry Reid and colleagues initiated a formal program to study UFO incidents involving the military. The civilian contractor was Bigelow Aerospace in North Las Vegas. Investigators interviewed 18 witnesses to the Tic Tac case and declared it to be a legitimate unknown. The Tic Tac in that incident, that's not Russian, that's not Chinese, it's not ours, right? right. It's, from, it's somebody else's, it's from somewhere else. Um, I think even more compelling, look, if this was a Tic Tac that we saw in 2004, that would have been extremely advanced technology and capabilities for 2004, I think everybody would agree. It's, it's extreme, it, it is considered extreme exotic technology today, let alone in 2004. But these observations match with previous observations going well before that. In other words, there have been other Nimitz-type incidents both before and since. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. This is the second video released by the Pentagon. It shows an object dubbed the gimbal. It is not related to the Tic Tac case, Elizondo confirmed. Other independent sources told the I-Team this video was recorded off the coast of Florida in 2015. There are many other dramatic encounters not yet made public. The Nimitz is, is simply an example of one case, one event in time of many that we looked at. When it continues to happen as a pattern, that is when we get to the point where we now become increasingly concerned because it's not an anomaly, now it's a trend. And if it's a trend, then we need to look at it. George Knapp, 8 News Now. It's rotating. People familiar with the UFO study say about two dozen UFO videos are being declassified for release to the public in the coming months. And Luis Elizondo says the technology displayed by the UFOs is beyond anything we have, but that scientists think they now understand how it works. More on that part of the story in the days ahead. We have links. So here we have Luis Elizondo, who ran ATIP for 10 years, and he says that there are many incidents such as these going way back, and that they are real and not of this world. Many people ask me, So if UFOs are real, and the government's had them for a long time, why hasn't anybody come forward who's worked on them? Well, the answer to that is that they have. Meet Bob Lazar. If you've ever heard of a place called Area 51, it's because of Bob Lazar. Back in 1989, Bob Lazar blew the whistle on a secret government base that was doing research and reverse engineering alien spacecraft. Bob's research was taking place at an area called S4, his research was so classified, even the people at Area 51 didn't have access to it. Did you witness any disc technology at Area 51? No, there was no, absolutely no ET craft, ET technology, anything like that at Area 51. This is why S-4 was made specifically to separate it there. People at Area 51 do not have the clearance. How long were you employed at S-4 and when were you hired? When was I hired at S4? I guess early 89, and I was probably there only about six months or so, uh, on a very infrequent basis. And it consists of nine hangars. The hangars have uh, sloped doors on them with a sand texture coating. Around the opposite end of the hangars, there's the standard entrance where you're dropped off at, you go through a security check, and inside there's a small complex. Uh, there is some office space, there are several laboratories, the hangars themselves of course, and uh, a few other places. I didn't have free reign to go wherever I wanted to. Everywhere I went to I was essentially escorted. Allegedly, obviously, I, I didn't see this and I don't know it to be fact, but this is what I was told, that I was hired uh, to replace one of a couple people that were killed uh, while working on one of the reactors from one of the crafts. Apparently they, for whatever reason, cut open an operating reactor and the device exploded, killing both of them. The scientists that were killed there, uh, allegedly the detonation from the explosion was 
fairly large. Uh, it would have rivaled a small tactical nuke. So it was done at the Nevada test site, and it was to be passed off as an un unannounced nuclear nuclear test. The great Supposedly the lie. information. Now, this isn't something that I determined. It's something I was told that uh, the crafts originated from uh, a planet that orbited the Zeta Reticuli star system. Zeta Reticuli 1 and Zeta Reticuli 2 are two, two stars of a binary star system. Uh, the craft allegedly came from there. But from that photograph, it looked like what you see in UFO lore as the typical gray. So how tall it was from what I could see, I, I couldn't tell because I only saw a portion of the photograph. But if everything else you see is correct, I would imagine it was three and a half or four feet tall. But uh, there again, you know, all I had to see was a photograph and, you know, I didn't have much to go on. It probably really hit me when I got inside the craft and looked around and began to understand how the craft was operated and finally grasped the whole project as a whole, as what we were doing, the fact that we weren't building this thing. We were trying to find out how it was made. We were back engineering it. There are three amplifiers. The craft can operate on a single one, can lift off the ground. The way in which it's propelled are two different ways. There's what they call Omicron configuration, where the craft is using one generator, uh, or Delta configuration, where it's us utilizing all three. Essentially, the craft will tilt up on its side as opposed to a science fiction movie where you see a flying saucer moving around, the craft will tilt up on its side, focus the three gravity generators to a single point, and move through space that way. What they do is once they're hovering in the air, they'll swing the gravity, two remaining gravity generators up in front of them and create a distortion, essentially a downhill, and the craft rolls downhill for infinity. It's always chasing a little distortion. That's why they look goofy when they fly around at low speed. After Bob came out to the media, strange things began happening to him. The government denied he had ever even worked for him. Later, items would surface that supported Bob's claims, such as a pay stub and a telephone directory with his name on it. Then, the universities where Bob claimed to have attended seemed to have no record of him. Again, this was odd as other students and faculty remembered Bob attending. One professor even said, quote, For a guy who didn't go here, he sure was in class a lot. End quote. It was almost as if somebody had tried to make Bob disappear to discredit him. Bob is the subject of a film recently released titled Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers. It's a full-length feature film and it's definitely worth the watch if you're interested in Bob's story. While I'm on the subject of film recommendations, I mentioned Unacknowledged earlier and Dr. Stephen Greer. Dr. Stephen Greer is a longtime ufologist who was brought in by President Clinton's administration to brief and advise them on the UFO phenomenon after they were stonewalled by the existing intelligence community. And you'll have to watch that movie if you want to see what happens when somebody tells the president, I'm sorry, sir, that information is need to know. Up until the point that I watched unacknowledged, I didn't even know that there was classified information that the president couldn't be told. What the fuck? So where does that leave us now? I'll tell you what, I'm not waiting for the so-called mainstream to accept extraterrestrial life. Paul Hellyer, a former Canadian Minister of Defense and a longtime UFO believer, had this to say when asked if he thought the mainstream media would ever find a story big enough to report on. Well, there will never be anything big enough for the media to report because the media is compromised and is totally corrupt. 
Now this really makes me mad. And I said earlier that the great lie had affected billions of human lives. And I want to tell you why I feel that way. If this lie was never told and disclosure was given almost 80 years ago, it may have led to a more peaceful and unified world. A world where resources could be shared and people wouldn't have to go hungry. A world where everyone would have housing, regardless of which family or country they were born in. A world where every human being would have health care. A world where people didn't have to get sick and die prematurely. Fuck cancer. The Great Lie. A world without poverty. We could have been spending all of these resources that have been spent on weapons and war on the enrichment of all human life to allow the maximum achievement of potential of both spiritual and intellectual growth. The Great Lie. People have put up with it because they've been lied to for generations. And it's time to end the lie. It's time to disclose the truth. It's time to quit letting people suffer needlessly. It's time to start acting like human beings. I'm not waiting for the mainstream to reject the great lie and accept the truth that we are not alone in the universe. We are not alone in the galaxy. Heck, we're probably not even alone in the solar system. I believe this to be true, but I've made a good case to back my beliefs. And so I reject the great lie. I disbelieve that humanity is alone. I disbelieve that human beings are the center of the universe. And I disbelieve your lies that were told to our generation, to our parents' generation, to our grandparents' generation, and to our children's generation. And to those of you who are waiting for some grand disclosure, I wouldn't hold your breath. Instead, take a look at the information that's been provided and consider the fact that disclosure may have already occurred and is still ongoing. But don't take my word for it and don't take the government's word for it. I've gone to great lengths to document my research, so use those links below to go out and educate yourself. Then. Make up your own mind. Figuring things out for yourself is the only freedom anyone really has. Use that freedom. Make up your own mind. I want to play you guys this clip from Luis Elizondo, who I've talked about quite a bit. I think the same time next year, we're going to have a fundamentally different conversation. I think, I think disclosure already occurred. I don't think necessarily disclosure is an event. I think it's a process. And I think that process began. I have to say, I agree with Lewis on this one. Disclosure is a process, and it has already occurred, and it is ongoing. What do you all think about the subject? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't gotten a chance, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you know anyone who's interested in the subject, feel free to share this video with them. Well guys, for now, that's all I've got on Alien Disclosure. This is some very interesting stuff. Thank you, Manny. No, thank you. It's been my pleasure. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503. And I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth.